my name is Steve Gerhardt and this is the Unagi Observer. Thank you very much for showing up and watching today's installment of Where to Eat for Otakon Part 2. We're going to talk about uh, security and the culture of Washington, D.C. Things you should know before you go down. Parents, if you're worried about your kids or you're coming with your kids to Otakon, this is the episode you want. you really want to watch, okay? So let's dive right into the culture of Washington, D.C. Physically, Washington, D.C. is a beautiful city. It's, it's just lined with monuments, beautiful buildings, architecture. If you're like a photographer, it's like a dream. You know, you can just spend like years just taking pictures of all different kinds of things. And it is definitely the capital of the United States. Uh, you're going to see a lot of different people out there. You're going to see a lot of different from different countries, different parts of our own country. And it's very rare that you're going to find, not very rare, but it's going to be uncommon for you to actually bump into someone who's an actual native of D.C. Before you even bump into a native of D.C., you're going to bump into someone who lives in the D.C. metro area, which is the area that's right outside the Beltway uh, of Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia, and P.G. County and Montgomery County of Maryland. So it's just really, it just, it's just unique. It's just a very, very large, diverse culture is there. As far as the culture goes, um, pretty much it, when you run into a native or someone who, who lives in the D.C. metro area and comes into work to D.C., what you're unfortunately going to find is that they're not very friendly. And by that, I don't mean they're going to go out of their way to be rude to you, because that's not it at all. It's just that they kind of tend to be focused on themselves and their importance in their place in the machine, so to speak. So when you ask them for help, like directions, which is probably the most common question they get, um, they're going to help you. They're definitely going to help you, and they're going to make sure that you get where you need to go. It's just that you're going to get the feeling that you're like imposing on them, and they do feel like they're being imposed upon you by, uh, by you. And the reason for that is because they feel that they belong there, and you're the tourist, and you're the tourist. <laughs> So, you know, you're going to get that. Uh, it's, and it's kind of one of those common sense things, like when you're riding in the metro, or if you're walking on the sidewalk, if you happen to be a slow-moving person like I am, or you have to move slowly, stay to the right. If you move quickly, stay to the left. Again, no one's going to shove you out of the way or anything like that, but they're going to make their presence known, and they're going to ask you very politely, but very in a put-out manner, can you please move out of the way? So, just be aware of that. They're not trying to be mean to you. It's just that they have a different, definite plan of where they need to be. And so just, just be aware of that. The cabbies are very nice. The Uber, of course, people are very good. Um, so if you want a history of the town or a talkative driver, you can do those things. And they'll be happy to do that. And as they drive you around, they're going to drive your rate up. That's why they do it. It's, it happens in any city, but it seems like more so in D.C. sometimes. Um, the city, for the most part, and the places that you are going to be in are relatively clean. Um, they really don't put up with littering. Littering is kind of a thing down there where if you do it, someone's going to call you out. Um, and, and by calling you out, they're going to actually hand you your trash and ask you to throw it away. So don't be a litter bug, okay? And plus it's embarrassing. And why would you? The other thing you need to know about Washington, D.C. is that everything is more expensive. It just is. It's the tourist capital of the United States practically. Uh, well, it's, I shouldn't say that. It's in the top five, definitely. And it is definitely a place for conventions. I, you know, I've always felt that the, the, the idea to move to Washington, D.C. was actually a good one because it is a convention town, which means that it has the infrastructure to f support conventions, whereas Baltimore does not. Um, Having said that, that means that they know that tourists from other parts of the country and the world are going to come here and everyone's trying to make a buck off of you and just everything's going to be more expensive. It just is. Water, Cheetos, pack of gum, smokes, whatever. It's just more expensive. For example, if you're going to be a beer drinker, I'd almost tell you just to buy it out in Maryland or Northern Virginia and bring it in with you because quite a few of the stores will do this to you. You'll, buy, you'll go to the refrigerated section, you pull out a six-pack, and then they're going to charge you a dollar more 
because it came out of the fridge as opposed to off the shelf where it's warm because they're charging you for cost of keeping it cool. Yeah, that's a thing. So just keep those things in mind when you're talking when, when you're dealing with, with Washington DC. Now, most of the time you're gonna be at the convention center, so you're gonna be in an area that's actually kinda of aimed towards tourists, but there's gonna be a lot of um, natives and people who work around there because there's actually there's a lot of office in a couple neighborhoods that surround um, the convention center. So and the convention center is, is widely used. So there's gonna be you're gonna see some of that but mostly it's tourism. Um, I will tell you that if you want to have a tour of Chinatown, don't pay for it. Just walk there, turn left at the at the gates. You'll see it. And you'll know it when you see it. Just walk down Seventh Street, and you'll see the big Chinatown gate. You're gonna walk through it, and you're gonna walk about a block, and that's gonna be it. So don't waste your money. Don't waste your money on a Chinatown tour. It's a waste of time. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the culture. Just kind of know, be aware of what's going on around you. Try not to get in the way. And just understand that you're just gonna pay more for stuff that you may not pay a lot more. Like 99 cent bottles of water do exist in Washington DC, but you actually have to kind of look for them. All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of this, which is about safety and security in Washington DC. Okay, so Washington DC is like any other major DC in the United States of America. It's got its problems with crime. Um, for some, some cities are better, some are worse, some have different types of crimes, things of that nature. Washington DC, and particularly the place where we're gonna be at, which is in um, you know, the convention center, around that area, there's a lot of crime that you don't have to worry about. And quite frankly, you never really had to worry about in Baltimore, like getting murdered. Like in Baltimore, statistically, you, it's more likely that you'll get hit by lightning than actually gunned down by a drug dealer because in Baltimore, you actually need to go where the drug dealers are to get shot at. Washington, D.C., kind of the same idea. There's certain neighborhoods that they operate in. There's certain places that they don't operate in. One of the places that we're going to be at Otacon, which is Washington Convention Center, they're pretty much not going to be there. So you don't need to worry about things like that. It's that kind of crime you don't really need to worry about. Um, but you do need to worry about other types of crime that you may not have had to worry about here in Baltimore. Here in Baltimore, we have a homeless kind of problem. You know, they, they're, they're everywhere, and uh, all the years I've gone to the BCC, you know, the convention center, um, there's always been the bombs, and I've always given advice of just not give money to them and just keep walking past them, because if you do, then they're going to latch onto you. You're not going to see that many bums in the area that you're at because it's heavier patrolled by police and federal police. So they kind of shoo them along. They don't want them there standing outside of the convention center panhandling. They don't want that, so they make sure that that goes away. So you don't really have to worry about that. You don't really have to worry about being mugged, per se, as long as you're staying in the convention center or in your hotel and you're taking an Uber and you're being responsible. One of the biggest things, and this, this actually doesn't just go for, for Otakon, this goes for any travel. This is a travel tip in general. Most United States cities, the police forces have figured something out. When they ask people, the, the people they arrest for mugging, they say, why did you pick this person? What is it about this person that you thought made, made a good victim for you? And the answer was the same almost every single time, and that is this. They weren't paying attention, and they were by themselves or there was just one other person with them and that person wasn't paying attention. Think about that for a second. The only reason why these people got mugged was because they weren't paying attention. That means like when you're walking down the street and you're, you're on your cell phone, you're looking at your cell phone, you're totally oblivious to the world around you, you're making yourself a target. They will come after you. They, they will mug you in places in DC. It's just that they're gonna wait for the opportunity. If you give them the opportunity, that's kind of on you. So don't give them the opportunity. Travel with multiple people or at least one other person. Be aware of your surroundings. As long as you're aware of your surroundings, if you look like that you're kind of paying attention to who's walking towards you, or even if you just kind of happen to look around a little bit as you're walking around, you know, like even if it's just sightseeing, they're going to leave you alone. They're going to leave you alone because they know that you're paying attention. So they're, they're gonna, they know that you're going to be aware of them when they come up to you. 
That's the whole point. They don't want you to be aware. So don't give them that opportunity. Pay attention. Put the phone away. I know I sound like an old man, but put the phone away unless you're actually taking a picture. And then obviously it's a tourist thing. And they're still going to look at you. The other big thing that you need to worry about when it comes to Washington, D.C. crime in terms of tourism is pickpockets and people who do snatch and grabs. That is probably the worst thing that you need to worry, to worry about. So a pickpocket is just that, someone who's going to go up to you on the metro. It's usually going to happen in the metro station or on the metro where they're going to try and pick your pockets. So just make sure that you know you have, you're aware of the people around you and that you have your wallet or your possessions in a, in a way that prevents someone from just reaching in and, and taking it. So just be aware of that. Now in terms of snatch and grab, that's literally like let's say you have your cell phone and you're sitting at a table outside and you just put your cell phone down for like two seconds, someone's going to come up and grab it or run. That's how it happens. Purses, same thing. Don't put it on the back of your chair put it in your lap or hook it on your knee underneath the table or if you're riding metro put the strap around you so that it comes across your body that way they can't just grab it and then just take off and that's what they'll do so as you approach a station they'll grab a, a, a purse and then just hightail it off the off the train and go into disappearing the station or if you're on the streets they'll just grab it off the table off out of your hands and just run like hell and you're not going to catch up just going to tell you that right now you're not going to catch up so those are the things that you really need to worry about on terms of day-to-day -day kind of crime and things like that you don't need to worry about um you know like you know drive-by shootings or anything like that that's 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 nothing you have to worry about it's the, the little things that you just kind of need to look out for and again i say this year after year after year simply pay attention you might be traveling at night. You're going back to your hotel. Um, you're staying late. You're staying for the fan parodies like I would. And you're about to go home. Invest the money in a cab, an Uber, a Lyft, something of that nature, and travel with somebody. You really shouldn't be traveling alone anyway. But travel with somebody so that there's somebody else there. It's just, <clears throat> it's just like an added piece of armor. Someone's unlikely to take on two people. They'll take on one person if they think they can get the advantage, but two people, not so much. So just make sure you're traveling with someone else. If you're part of a group of like three or more, great. That is that is the ultimate deterrent. No one's going to screw with you. And you just travel as a pack, and you make sure everybody gets to where they need to go. And as long as you do that and you're aware of what's going on around you, and if you see somebody sketchy and you don't like it, you can always turn around. You can always call the police on the phone. This is Washington, D.C. The police are everywhere. Trust me. And if you don't get a D.C. cop, you're going to get a capital cop. If you don't get a capital cop, you can get a federal sheriff. Somebody is going to come to help you. It's, it's D.C. is our capital. So just if you, if you have any questions, stay in a group, get in a well-lit area, and make sure that everyone can see you on the phone calling. They'll leave you alone at least for a little bit. Okay, I'm going to make this real quick and really easy. In Baltimore, we had riots, and it pretty much killed Otakon up here. I mean, they already made the decision to move, but it just was like the last nail in the coffin. In D.C., you're, the chances of a riot is very low, but you're going to run into protests. They are going to happen. They are going to be there. Um, check the websites. Um, I'll find a few links that you can check. And if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, look down below and I'll have those links for you. And it kind of gives you an idea of where the protests are, where they're going to be, if they're marching, if the, you know, where they're going to march. So that way you can plan around them so you don't have to walk through them. Because that's really not something you want. And unfortunately, given the political, where, whatever you, wherever you are, left or right, I don't care, it's kind of very contentious right now. Don't bother. Don't fall. You know, they might look at you in your cosplay and be like, eh, and, like, give you crap for it. Just just keep walking. Just keep walking. Don't, don't buy into it because when you do, that's when you become a YouTube video and you look like a jackass. So don't look like a jackass. You're there to be at Otakon to have fun. So if you have to, if you're forced to go buy 
a protest. Don't involve yourself. They're doing their own thing. You're doing your own thing. Go do and have fun. Go do Otakon and have fun. Forget the protests. Don't join in. Now, here's another part about DC that you need to know about security and safety. Talking about you cosplayers, especially the ones with weapons. I know you want to show off. I know you want to go out and be on the mall and show off your, you know, if you're, you know, show off your, your big Gundam gun or whatever firearm if you're playing, um, are, are the, you know, Helsing and you got his big ass 44 gun, whatever. When you start waving that around, you call attention to yourself by the police. They will come. They, they will come. They will come to you. They will inspect you, and if you are flippant with them, if you decide to be a jerk to them, you're going to be hauled in, and you're going to spend the rest of the weekend in a small room answering questions that you're going to be like, and all they did, it's just paper mache, and they're not going to care. All right, they take this very seriously. Washington, D.C. is a terrorist target. If you go around waving a weapon, even if it's just a cardboard knife, they're going to come to you. That's why you should not have it out or put together until you get into the convention center. Once you're inside the convention center, different rules. Just follow the Otakon rules. It's online. You can take a look at it. That leads me to the last thing about security at Otakon. And that is this. Yes, the lines to check your bag are long, and it takes a long time to check your bag. It's for your safety. Deal with it. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be rude about it. But you gotta just freaking deal with it. I know you want to get into the con convention as soon as possible, but it really is about your safety. When you think about what's going on in the world right now, you actually want that. You actually want someone to be digging through some your somebody's bag in the off chance, in the very off chance that there might actually be a firearm in there. You don't want that. We no, none of us want that. That's why they're doing it. And unfortunately, it takes a long time because there's a lot of people that need to come in through those doors. So. When you have your cosplay weapons, make sure they're disassembled and follow the rules that Ocon gives you. When you come in, if you're going to carry a bag, you're just going to have to wait in line. That's just how it is. Um, sorry, but, you know, deal with it. I'm a sailor on this ship I don't want to go down like this I'm an expert at two years old You can always expect, I already know I'm an expert at two years old You can always expect, I already know
there. Thank you for watching the slideshow. We're going to finish up this security and staying safe video. Um, just wanted to point out, um, previously talking about the riots and protests. Protests, like I said before, you're just going to have jerks who are going to be in protest. Just avoid the protests altogether and you'll be fine. But really what I want to tell you is that should a riot happen, you're going to be in one of two places. You're either going to be in the convention center or you're going to be in a hotel. Both places are going to be equipped to withstand a riot, meaning that they are, they are going to be able to lock down, they are going to be able to keep you safe, or they're going to keep your kids safe. The cops know that Otakon is going on, they know that there's kids in there, so they're going to be very aware of that. Hotels generally have a standard operating procedure on that, so does the Washington DC Convention Center. What I'm telling you is basically this. If, you're, if you are in one of those two, bu two buildings, and a riot happens, stay in that building. It's the safest place you can be. It's the most logical place for you to be in case somebody needs to find you. If, you're, if you are um, under 18 and you're with a group of friends and, and this, the unlikelihood of a riot happens, contact your parents as soon as possible. Let them know exactly which building you're, you're in, which hotel you're in, um, if you're in the convention center or not and stay there. Don't try to leave. Don't try to leave the city. That's the worst thing you can do. Just stay there and ride it out. They are have protocols to help you do that. So be aware of that. Okay, so now this next part is for you adults. Um, I'm going to try and keep this very simple because I know that this video has run pretty long. Um, if you have kids or if your kids coming here um, on their own for the first time or you're bringing your kids, young kids here, the biggest thing you can do is communicate. Communication is the key. Make some ground rules, tell them you have that you want to know where they are, okay? Now, if you're not going to be at Otakon, then it would stand to reason that you want to establish check-in times. Hey, at uh, 11 a.m., let me know where you are, take a selfie. Let me know where you are. If you're at 10 p.m., let me know where you are. Take a selfie. Let me know where you are. Just you know, just want just want to see where you are, see that you're okay. Um, call me. You know, you want to tell your kid. Call me if you're going to hang out with new people. If uh, you're going to go to a party, uh, you know, if someone invited you to a video game party, let me know what room that you're going to be at. Those kinds of things. Just impress upon your kid that you're not there to micromanage them, but you just need to know where they are in case they need to contact them, in case you need to contact them. Now, if you're with your kid and they're kind of on the younger side, you say under 13, it's not a bad idea as soon as you get inside the, the convention center to look at the map and figure out a place to meet in case the two of you get, in case you and your kids get separated. Find a place on the map go to that place and say, okay, if we get separated, I want you to come here. This is the first place I'm going to look. So if you come here and you don't see me, stay here until I get there. And you don't move. You don't go anywhere. You stay there. And if I get there before you, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to go anywhere. You come here first and find me. That's usually the best way to do it. The reason for that is that the PA system is not used in these convention centers nowadays to help you find your lost kid. They don't do that. The PA is reserved for when things go really, really wrong and a lot of people need to get out or stay inside the building. So they're not gonna go, so if you go up to a security and say, hey, can you page my son, daughter to meet me, blah, 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 they're not gonna do it. That's not gonna happen. So that's why you kinda need to set up those rules. In terms of, getting, of your kid getting their picture taken, if you're there with your kid, the person who's taking the picture should be asking you for permission. They shouldn't be coming up and taking the picture. They should be asking you for permission. And you have every right. If there's something that you just don't feel right about and you don't think they should, then you can say, no, please don't. You have every right to say no. No matter what your kid says, no matter what the photographer says. If no, if that's the way you're feeling, just go with it. It really is better just to go with your gut. Now, if you decide to let the person take the picture, you have, again, every right to ask the photographer to see the picture that they took of your kid so that you can make sure that he's not trying to do something weird with the picture, if you know what I mean. Odds are that's not going to happen. That's not what they're after. They're just after 
a, a picture to post online. So just make sure that you can that if you feel the need to ask, to ask. They are expecting it. People who take photographs like I do at conventions, we actually expect you to ask us to see the picture. And it's on us to ask you for permission first. Whenever we come up to somebody, even with, with no parent, if it's they're just standing there and they're posing, we always ask first. We always say, hey, can I take your picture? Yes, you can. Okay. And that's usually when about two or three other people come in, can I take your picture? Yes, you can. Click, click, click. Thank you. And it's done. It's over. But permission is always asked for before we take a picture. And you should expect that of anyone. So, in that, most people at conventions, anime conventions, are very, are very observant of that rule. They don't, they don't want to get kicked out for something stupid. So, they're going to ask permission. But in the case that they don't, then say no. And if you see them doing it to other kids, maybe let somebody know. Because even though I've never seen that happen at Otakon, and I don't know of anybody that's ever done that, you know, just keep an eye out. You never know. Now, if, um, again, if your kid decides to go to a party, if you're worried about underage drinking, are there people going to be in hotels with alcohol? Yes, they are. They're generally going to be of age. It's really hard. It's, it's In order for an underage person to get alcohol, it's actually pretty darn difficult. So that's not something I would actually really worry about. Uh, that's, you know, those days in, of the past of where people you know, just willy-nilly get beer from anybody and nobody cares that they're not 21. Those days are long gone. Um, having run a bar myself, um, I can tell you that it's easier to say no to an underage kid than it is to say yes. So I would not really worry about that. Otakon has events that are 18 and over. Um, you have to get a wristband if you are 18 or over to go to those events. If your kid is not 18 or over, they're not going to get a wristband. So those are things that you don't have to worry about. Um, again, in order for your kid to get drunk, they have to hook up with somebody who is just totally unsavory, and odds are your kid is probably going to be like, uh, yeah, I don't want to deal with this guy. So trust your kid to make the, good, the, the right judgment, because they usually are. Because when you go to Otakon, you don't go to Otakon to get drunk. You go to Otakon to have a good time and see things and do things different, different things. And just enjoy yourself. So if you have a kid that's going to Otakon, trust them, but also make sure that you're in constant contact. Giving them a phone is not a bad idea. Giving them a way to contact you is not a bad idea. Being not hovering, you don't want to hover, but being there and being present not a bad idea. So just keep those things in mind and your kid is going to be fine and most importantly not only is your kid going to be fine they're going to have fun and so will you. Whew. Okay that was a really long video thank you so much for bearing with me with on this. Um, if I could give you a real taco I would. <laughs> um, if I could give you a digital taco right now I would um, for, for sticking around this long if you're at this point. So we're at the end of the video uh, next week is going to be the final one before we go to Otakon, and that's going to be what you really want to see, which is where to eat for Otakon down in D.C. There are numerous places if you decide to leave the convention center to get a meal, um, and also places to get stuff so that you can have it for the hotel. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like what I do, um, or if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you like what I do, Please subscribe. I would love it if you subscribed. It's um, I'm getting close to 100, 100 subscribers. I know that doesn't seem like a lot these days, but to me it means a lot. So if you can subscribe, that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, until then, um, hope this video has helped you. I know it was long. And enjoy the week, and I'll see you guys next time.